$150 million jackpot. It's a lot of money. I don't even know what I'll do with all that money. Ugh. I only bet when it reaches a certain level. Because then the odds will make it, you know, acceptable. I think uh, poorer people, less fortunate people, are more likely to um, bet on the lotto because firstly they don't know the odds, the pot odds, how probability works and it's less probable for them to become rich so I mean if I was poor I'd probably bet on the lotto a lot too well I still kind of am poor <laughs> but I'm talking about like the poor uneducated people which have little chance of becoming rich winning a powerball lotto is one out of 292 million so technically, if you invest one dollar for a chance to win 292 million dollars, but the odds are one in 292 million, then you're even. It's like you could bet on it or not. Holding that dollar in your hand is just as worth as if you were to buy that lotto. But remember, each lotto ticket is cost two dollars. So you have to multiply 292 million times 2. So the jackpot would have to be 584 million dollars. If the jackpot was higher than 584 million dollars or equal to it, then it'd be worth betting the lottery. I don't uh, factor in tax because in any business, in any venture, um, there's always going to be tax. So that's equal. So that means I should play today. <laughs> I forgot to factor in the odds of someone else winning the jackpot at the same time as I do so that kind of splits the pot so I have to factor that in too. Here's a, a thought experiment. Would you rather um, have 100% chance of winning $50? Like for sure you're gonna win $50 or would you have a 50 50-50% chance, 50% chance of winning $100, and 50% chance of winning $0. So, sure $50 or a 50-50 chance of 100 or 0? Pause the video and think about it. And so basically, if you chose the sure $50, then your risk, risk, uh, your risk averse you don't like risking it um, but then if you chose the second option the 50 50 um, then you're willing to take risks it's like go big or go home all or nothing and this um, this outlook in life basically ties into conservatives and liberals republicans and democrats basically conservatives they like to play it safe, but then they're average, aka the middle class. These are the people who like to take safe jobs, maybe maybe accountants or doctors or uh, clerks or construction workers, plumbers. But as a liberal, you like to take risks. So, for example, a risky job would be an artist, a musician. It's either you're a broke musician or you're a super rich musician, right? So there's like a gap between the rich and the poor musician. So maybe that's why liberals, they like tax because to soften the blow of the financial risk, the super rich could absorb some of the tax. They could afford getting taxed while the super poor, they need financial support from that super rich. So. Anyways, what is money anyway? Money is just paper if you think about it. It's a, it's a tool. It's a, it's a measurement of how much value put, you put into society. Could be. It's the ultimate form of validation that you gave someone what they wanted and what they needed. See, in business, val validation is key. It's the gold standard. Let's say I want to start an ice cream business in this particular location so i could before i started i could interview all the people and they could say yeah we love ice cream we'll buy it from you 
but all of those interviews, all, all of those market studies don't mean anything because they could be like lying or maybe they don't really know what they want. Until they give up that cash, that's when you really know that you gave them what they wanted. Anyways, political parties is just cyclical really. Once the middle class gets overstrained, overheated, then they vote and then they win. And then once the lower or upper class get overheated, then they vote and then they win. So it's like a cycle of left and then right and then left and then right. If you look at the presidents historically, it's like always alternating. I think people, what if people just came clean, just admitted that we're all self-serving? For example, I know someone who who joined, he's, he's not from the States originally, but he joined the U.S. Army and now he became a citizen and he he petitioned his family members so they become, can become U.S. citizens. So back then, of course, he supports that kind of law, which the, the Republicans don't like. But now that his, he and his family is all U.S. citizens, he wants to prevent other people from doing the same thing, from petitioning their family to become U.S. citizens. Because maybe he doesn't want it to be overcrowded. So now he, he's against that, that bill, the petitioning relatives. So we vote self-servingly, you know. An another example would be personally when I was v like voting and then I was asked if I wanted to support a children's hospital in the community. So I, I voted no because I didn't have children. It wouldn't benefit me. But probably if I did have children, I'd probably vote yes. So we're all self-serving and we should just admit it. Or maybe like a broke student would want more schools, but then the rich person who already has an education would want less schools, less competition, you know, self-serving. I think there should be a news channel that's, that's neutral, looks at both sides, not like Fox is right and CNN is left. It's ridiculous. Let's just admit that we're all self-serving and that's it, you know? No need to get angry, no need for violent protests. I think there should be a news channel that doesn't spin things. So easy to spin things, for example. I heard this from a friend. Um, I don't know if this is true, but um, maybe there's a story. Trump has sex with a 17-year-old. So they spun the story. Actually, yeah, he did have sex with a 17 year old but that was when he was 17 so sometimes you could leave out some information and it'll make the story look bad or good we want to try to avoid that talking about age of consent what why why 18 i wonder who decided that such an arbitrary number you know or is it 21 i'm not sure but i think it should be not an age i think it should be a test like if you pass this test then you're able to consent and that test is gonna ask questions like do you know what will happen if you get pregnant or what happens during pregnancy or the cost of having a child so if they could pass that test then maybe they are better to consent to sex because there's probably a lot of 18, 19, 20 year olds that are not prepared and yet legally they can consent, you know? So if I were president, 2020, another spin story could be, for example, um, a policeman pulled over a guy who was driving rec recklessly and the policeman asked, are you doing drugs? And the driver was like, no, but to the driver, he was actually doing marijuana, but to the driver, he didn't consider marijuana as a drug. So it's easy to spin things and 
in order for you to get what you want, you know. We want to try to avoid that. I want to, at least. The honest observer movement wants to. Anyway, back to money. I think um, in the future, society could be without money. It'll just be like a supercomputer that keeps track of the resources and makes sure, makes sure the people don't overuse the allotted resources they have and people will pretty much be all equal in terms of like physically, mentally, it'll be fully abundant hopefully. So equal like due to gene editing and scientific advancements, people will be more attractive, people will be more stronger, smarter, live longer. And then the farmers, there's going to be no farmers, it's going to be robot farmers. All the jobs are going to be robot. So that people don't have to fight for limited resources. That would be nice, imagine that. Like anything you want in like a lobster. It'll be like not a real lobster because animal cruelty. It'll be like a synthesized lobster which is healthier and tastes better than a real lobster. Or maybe... You want to get a massage and it'll be like from a robot massage masseuse. If you want a house near the beach, the robot's going to build it. Full abundance, that's awesome. Now, as a disclaimer, I did do drugs, but that was like 15 years, 10, 15 years ago. I, I did um, marijuana, ecstasy, cocaine, <laughs> of course, uh, alcohol and tobacco. But I'm telling you this because I don't want you to try it. Because when I was younger, no one taught me the effects of those drugs. So of course I was curious. But at least you, you don't have to do it yourself because I could just tell you. So marijuana makes you happy, makes you giggle, makes you laugh, makes you hungry. I think it makes, it makes you amazed at the world. The downside is... It dumbs you down, which is a scary thing. It slows your brain down. So imagine if you were super dumb, anything would be amazing because wow, how did they create that cement on the road? How did they mix those chemicals? How did they build this uh, metal signage? How did they manipulate all the machinery? So when you're dumber, like everything seems more amazing, right? It slows your thinking down. And I don't know if it causes cancer or not. It, you're inhaling smoke, so it could be it's like tobacco, and they linked smoking tobacco with um, cancer. So, so don't try it if you don't want to be dumb. You know, cocaine. Cocaine is a powder, and you you sniff it in your nose. It felt like something cold was mel melting in my brain, like some sweet ice cream. It's like I could feel the sweetness. That's how it felt to me, and of course. It makes you euphoric, meaning it makes you happy. It makes you cherish the moment. Like, So when I did it and then I accidentally killed an ant, I was like, oh no, I killed an ant. I killed a life form. So it makes you a hippie, basically. <laughs> you, you just want to love everything, everyone. I was sort of detaching a person's name to their personality, which is a weird experience. But if you've seen the before and after pictures of the brains, the brain scans of people who use these kind of drugs. It's like you, you see their brain shrink like 75%. And I can see how that happens because of course after you experience something so happy, um, why would you want to like stress your brain again? Why would you want to study when you could just snort that drug and be happy? It's like I guess it's like Chris, like after Christmas, like Christmas you receive all these gifts, these cool toys and everything, video games. And then when you have to go back to school, it's like, ugh, I'm lazy. So that's basically what drugs do, it's like it makes you accustomed to that happiness. And then when it comes time to doing work and studying, using your brain, it, you know, it's like a withdrawal. Ecstasy. Ecstasy is bad. Because it makes you like super excited, it makes you clench your jaws, and the next morning my jaws hurt. I got like red spots, 
and yeah the same effect like it kills your brain cells basically and I heard like some people they develop like twitching and uh, neurosis you could go crazy with these kind of drugs so don't do drugs beer kills the liver kidneys whatever linked to cancer and plus it's dangerous if you drive smoking obviously causes cancer so don't do any of that if you want to live a long time anyways i hope you liked this video i hope this was kind of educational and i need to start heading back i walked a long way and my laundry is probably finished in the coin laundry hope no one stole it but yeah if you like the video and want to join the honest observer movement I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. <laughs> like and subscribe and yeah, in the comment section tell me your thoughts like have you tried these drugs and and would you live in a moneyless society dictated by a super benevolent artificial intelligence? Would you rather have everything fully abundant, all the clothes all the clothes, all the purses, all the houses? food full abundance would you live in full abundance but you you had to follow an artificial intelligence or would you live in a society like right now where there's poverty but at the same time there's some rich people too basically capitalism with a little bit of socialism so tell me about it are you more left-leaning right-leaning are you neutral like me do you play the lotto anyways peace out guys peace at least it's better than war, right? <laughs>